Hello YouTube, it's Summer and a Geek here. A little different video today. Well, not too different from my other videos. This is another highlight video from a previous stream that I have. On uh, November 10th, I came home from Current Con, the anime convention from Port in Portland, and I decided to stream Castlevania Harmony and Distance, but then I also started talking about the election that just happened. Uh, and a friend was in the live chat, Necronomicon. Uh, the link to her Twitch channel is down, down below, or right here on the screen if I remember to put it in. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Necronomicon. Uh, she decided that like if I was going to talk about the election, she wanted to join into a voice call with me to talk about it on my stream as well too. And yeah, I love talking politics with my friends as well too. And like, I'm it, it was like a good conversation because especially for her as a meteorologist her worry about like what the upcoming administration will do especially with regards to climate change research and stuff like that so that was pretty much the bulk of this conversation in this video uh also our friend uh, lucidia has also joined the call as well too and we're there's going to be more videos from this conversation from this stream that we'll put up later but for right now here's this video of me of us just talking about the election there you go. If I can, like, just let it, since this is my, my space and my and platform and that sort of thing, too, the results of, like, the recent election. I don't know. For me, I'm kind of like. I don't fear it as much as others. I can understand why they, like, uh, fear it. Um. Guys, I don't think it's an exaggeration that people are catastrophizing of if like the uh, Cheetah Mussolini, um, number forty-seven, like uh, takes him back power because of the possibility of like we won't have like uh, elections ever again. Uh, not a zero possibility. There's like the chances of that is like more than zero. Yes, but I'm such a also a cynical person that. I don't, even if, like, Kamala Harris, like, managed to win, I know there's, like, significant tangible differences between, like, uh, the Kamala Harris presidency and Trump presidency. Ah! Uh, you know what? I don't usually do this, but, like, I'm up for that. I can call you on Discord. Oh, okay. You went to do, like, your thing. Yeah, I'll join you. And, yes, yeah, so. Hello. Uh, <laughs> Still have not, like, uh, I gotta, like, do a thing. Gonna raise my desktop audio a bit. Because I have not separated, like, a Discord audio from, like, the rest of the audio. But I'm going to open up. Uh, Lucidia, aren't you Necronomicon's, like, a Discord server? Because like that's where we are right now. Oh wow! I won't I won't dwell too much because there's actually some topics that I want to mention in a future social justice alchemy. Sure. Uh, if you're willing to let me in again, because there's yeah. some meteorological stuff. Oh yeah, no, no, yeah. Specifically. Yeah, I I do want to have you back on uh, social justice alchemy to talk about those sort of things, like the flash flooding that happened in Spain not too long ago, or are there any other like uh, weather events, or wait, the climate change just in general. Uh, yeah, would... not just climate change in general, but what the upcoming government wants to do about the current way that we do for weather forecasting. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Um. Uh, yes, yeah, so oh, surprise! No yes, uh, Lin Wu, surprise! No echo on stream. I don't know. I just like uh, sorry to the top look about like uh, the election and that sort of thing too, because I I know that like it's not a false equipment that like the that like the Sukkulkin party that are fascists and the Democrats are like um, the same. They're just like the conservative the capitalist uh, class. It's like as my friend Jamie J like pointed out, this election was between the fascists. And the enablers of the system that, like, allow for fascism to thrive. So, yeah, yes, it is better for, like, uh, Kamala Harris to, like, win. It's, but we're, we're just going to have to, like, constantly have this battle between, between fascism and the enablers of the system that, that allows for fascism to rise. Uh, until we just, like, 
get rid of this like entire world order as a number two, or um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, we have to like if somehow and some other until that will be always be what the election thing un lead up to, or that's the choices that we're forced to make each and every time until this current world order goes away somehow. Anyway, real quick, how long have I had modding capabilities? <laughs> I asked you, it, because you became, you asked me to be your mod, it was like a year or two ago that I said, since you're a mod for, since I'm a mod for you, why don't I, uh, you mod for me? I, I completely forgot about that. <laughs> but yeah, so. There, so at least on a personal standpoint. There are three fronts in my life that are directly or indirectly put in, shall we say, peril mm -hmm. as a result of this election. And this is coming from someone who I honestly believe that I do have a position of privilege. Yes. Uh, something about it, especially as someone who's Caucasian. Yeah. Um, I am, like, my girlfriend and I, we're okay, mm -hmm. overall, um, yeah. but, I mean, we're far from being the, the type of person that stands to, shall we say, for lack of a better term, stands to benefit from what's coming next. Yeah, we are. <laughs> um... The three fronts for me, personally, are my ident- or, like, the three things that make me who I am, basically. Mm -hmm. My gender identity and sexuality. Mm -hmm. My religion. Mm. Yeah. And my scientific practice. Yeah. My sign- like, my scientific passion. Mm -hmm. So... The the gender is obvious. Yeah. That that one we don't have to talk about too too much. It's blatantly mm. clear. Yeah. That people who are of the LGBTQ plus alphabet mm -hmm. stand to lose in the upcoming um, regime. Yeah. The second one, as as someone who broke out of Catholicism and now is a practicing pagan. Mm -hmm. um, I worry because of the potential theocracy kind of ideals mm -hmm. coming from this. I mean, I'm going to be honest, separation of church and state at this point has basically been dissolved. Yeah. And it's not to say it, it hasn't been completely separated for a while now. But over the past eight years, it is any sort of boundary between them has been just completely chipped away to the point that there's almost no barrier anymore. Like, mm. de jure, yeah, there's still a separation. In the Constitution, it states that there has to be a separation of it. The, the church and the government cannot work in tandem, technically speaking. That is still the case. Sure. But... The yeah, you're a yeah, good point, but then there's like still too many like uh, homeless uh, shelters like run by like a uh, Salvation yeah. Army and so the things like that. Yeah. But, let's face it, a lot of the issues that are going to be much more, that have been, become very prominent lately, so LGBTQ plus issues, mm -hmm. Um, abortion. Mm -hmm. Basically anything that Twitch doesn't want me to say out loud right now. Um, <laughs> hey, who's going to find um, out that, that like this means like said out loud here on my Twitch stream as were too? Yeah. I'm sorry if you get... No, uh, no, no, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, all of them, a lot of the reasons why they're brought up is because of this so-called Christian morality. Or yeah. Or religious morality. And uh, let's face it, this, this quote-unquote morality really comes only from the main Abrahamic religions, especially yeah. Christianity. And and I want to make it clear. 
yeah, despite coming from someone who came from a, a Christian background, has trauma to process from it, despite mm. someone who didn't have the worst of it, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, I don't want to... I don't want to shit on anyone who practices it and is a better person for it because I do believe that those types of people absolutely exist. Mm -hmm. I, I, I know, I know you're you're the atheist, no god or no gods, no, no masters types. A but... pacifist, as it were, too. Yeah. It's, it's like, yeah, pretty much an atheist or like a Gnostic, but like it's like I'm not gonna like. I don't care about the discussion now. I no longer care about the discussion of like if there is a higher power or not. I just live my life as if there is none. Yeah. But like with like so many of these issues came from this quote unquote Christian moralism. It's a very it, specific it, like our interpretation of Christian moralism as well too. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's. It basically is turning our government into a channel for that type of belief mm -hmm. and they're li they're pushing it onto everybody mm -hmm. which is maddening and i'm concerned that i'm concerned that anybody that doesn't choose to follow that kind of religion is going to get taken for a ride and not in a good way mm -hmm. i mean he, i mean the the muslim ban was already attempted the first time around thank the gods it it failed as i think but, i think a version of it was still looking uh, implemented though it's just like it took him several times to like the for trump to get it done yeah and then it got reversed eventually and but the point is is that where is it going to end? Uh, the, like, am I going to have to... Am I going to have to... I'm already still kind of in the broom closet to begin with. I mean, how... Mm. Am I going to have to, like, really push further into it now? I, I, and, and, I, and I think that's true for other, shall we say, minority religions. Right. Um, uh, I don't know. It's just, like, the thing is... I'm critical, of course... I want to get to the roots of the problem is that like Trump is just a symptom. I want to get rid of the, well, like I say that like why I, I, I know I sound like that kind of like a leftist that like is almost like talks um, as much about like the Democrats and liberals uh, than he does about like uh, the fascists or like the far right uh, or more, more so about the liberals and Democrats. But it's because like with the Democrats, uh, with the, with the Republicans, the fascists, I know where I stand. I'm queer. Uh, mm -hmm. and, but with like Democrats and liberals is I, they, most of them claim to be for, uh, the, like this is something to say that like Jonathan, you and I, we want the same thing. I kind of want to challenge those. It's like, no, you're not. Because like, if you were, especially this one particular one was a, it's a small business owner. And it's just like, no, we don't want the same thing. Cause I want to a world without capitalism, without small business owners. And, and I do think that like, and also a world without like to say a gross of unjustifiable hierarchy with the monopoly of violence and monopoly of sanctioned violence as well too which can enforce yes the terrible uh, fascist like uh laws that could come in place from the trump administration i kind of hope that he's just still as incompetent as he was before i kind of hope that he still is like um I don't know. It's like a like a bowl in China and shot that he will just like fire people like after a couple of months just because like he doesn't like the person anymore. Uh, that doesn't mean that's not like he can't do any more harm because like uh, mm -hmm. he got to put in Brett Kavanaugh and uh, near Gorgeous and uh, Amy Cohen Barrett on the Supreme Court. But that's where it's just like I worry Jay Defense would be like more competent. Yeah, exactly, Lynn Wood. So we just it's same thing with like before in the previous like uh Trump administration. It's just like a like the someone a coworker I said this before on like as just as happening in other places, a coworker said, I just hope that someone shot Trump and I'm like, No, I don't want that because a, it will make him a martyr. We kind of already saw that, like in this past time when someone did actually shot him. 
And B, also, then we will have, the, then we will have, like, uh, President uh, Mike Pence, which is, like, a, could be arguable, like, worse or something like that. Or B, just another George W. Bush, and just as homophobic. And that's about enough as it is, too. Uh, so, yeah, having a J.D. Vance presidency, I think, is bad enough. Because, again, what people who have to remember with Project 2025 is that, like, it doesn't matter who is the Thuggan Party uh, candidate that will get into power. It's, like, so long it is, like, a Thuggan is in charge, they will have that plan together to, like, put in loyalists and just, like, prevent us from voting ever again if that happens. I, I, it's Again, it's, like, I know that, like, it's uh, not a zero percent chance of it happening. It's uh, possible. I I guess I I guess I never I guess I'm the one weird person that never worried about like a Trump presidency as much as like others, or like there's there's a non-zero chance that there there's a non-zero chance that he just doesn't even make it just because of his own health. Sure, it is definitely possible. I mean, but it, you mentioned Project Twenty Twenty Five that actually segues quite well into the third thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. As a scientist, mm -hmm. as a meteorologist, and as an advocate for the existence and prevalence of climate change, mm -hmm. um, one of the things that was mentioned in Project 2025 was basically the breaking up and pretty much the dissolving of the National Weather Service. Mm -hmm. And that alone is one of the most terrifying prospects that I can think of. Mm -hmm. as, as someone who's a meteorologist and a scientist. Because the main reason being the National Weather Service and NOAA is where we get our forecasts from. Mm -hmm. And those forecasts are free. Yeah. They are freely accessible to anyone, if assuming you can figure out how to find it, which mm. sometimes is not the easiest thing. I would I can attest to that. Mm -hmm. But at least it's freely available. Mm -hmm. Um what they want to do, what has been written in there, and I know I keep saying they like it's some sort of conspiracy, but this is literally what's written in there. It's not a conspiracy if it's true. Yeah, they basically want to take the elements of the National Weather Service, break it up, and privatize as much of it as possible. Mm -hmm. Which means there there would be a hierarchy in how weather forecasts are presented and quite possibly a paywall. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't, I personally cannot imagine a world where our ability to get accurate weather forecasts is affected by our ability to pay for it. There was, but, but there's been some of that already where it's just like, um, not necessarily everything. Maybe maybe not the other things from like the the weather services as well too. But from universities themselves, they even when like the professors or the like uh, academics that will write the papers and stuff like that, they want that information. Most I think most of them uh, want that information out there. There are some right wing academics that like is like no, I did, uh, you pay me money for this. This is like how I'm going to like uh, live a good life as well too. As so yeah, you're talking about scholarly articles yeah. more than anything, which there's absolutely a paywall issue with that, and there are ways to work yeah, that... around it as well. Mm -hmm. But more often than not, the the academics are not the ones getting the money from that. It's the yeah, yeah. publishers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, that was my point too. Yeah, and and so and a lot and, and when you think about like the private institutions that produce weather forecasts, the, the main one is like AccuWeather. Mm -hmm. All right. That's the one that, like, everybody knows about. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, their own forecasts can come from the National Weather Service. Mm -hmm. And then they just spruce it up. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, oftentimes, like, it's been shown that if, if like, private institutions try and do their own forecasting, it just doesn't work as well. 
Interesting. So, I mean, am I saying the government is perfect in its ability to predict the weather? No. Mm -hmm. Not at all. You can see that just by comparing GFS model with the European model. Yeah. Hey, um, hey, Gar hey Garmin. Uh, Garmin. Gaming archaeologist in my YouTube chat. How are you doing? Yeah. Oh, oh, by the way, so, uh, the voice call is like um, a Necronomicon, uh, gaming archaeologist, one of my friends. Uh, Lin Rue is like, thinks about like the David Graeber complaining about uh, how much university administration has happened, like increased and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, that's this is not Nasdaq Neco, uh, gaming archaeologist, Necronomicon. Believe it or not, there are two different people, and they, even though they say, share the same brain cell. Why am I not seeing that person in the chat? They're on the, my YouTube chat. I'm streaming to YouTube as well. Oh, so it's showing both your chats at once. Okay, interesting. Uh, on the chat box, on like my stream itself, yes, it is showing like uh, both people. But like uh, Game Marker is on YouTube, while like everyone else so far is on <laughs> Twitch. This is not the first time today I've been mistaken for Naz. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah. So, and one of, and, and and the reason and the reason why they highlighted why they wanted to break up the National Weather Service is because essentially they are just a a conduit and a purveyor of climate change science which of course they are mm -hmm. of course they have to they have to be these are no 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 lynn remember we we decided that inside of me there are two cat girls and both of them are thirsty but they're different kinds of thirsty remember we we have a clip of that <laughs> <laughs> but they're always hungry too this. That, that's true. That's uh, true as well. I also will say, that, yes. Yeah, so, so I'll also say this, uh, gaming archaeologist. Yes, like uh, Necronomicon is cute, is a cutie. Uh, they don't deny that as well, too. Uh, just be uh, as front. I will speak for like Nancy Neko, unless she knows you, knows you well, and something like that. She doesn't uh, like the uh, strangers to refer to her as a cutie. Necronomicon doesn't. Uh, you, you can speak for yourself. You don't mind. Mm, depends. No, oh, right, right, right. Yeah, <laughs> but. But yeah, no, it's like, as, as this, this regime in the making is just so anti-science. Yeah. That I worry about whether, how we'll be able to continue publishing and presenting, like, factual information. I don't know. And, and, and like, if you're going to try and take, like, a, a scientific, a, a scientific government entity and fucking break it down when, <laughs> like, you couldn't, no, can't break it, break, can't, can't break up the banks, but you got to fucking break up the, the scientists, it's, so. Well, yeah, you can't break the banks because, like, you have to prop up capitalism. Yeah. It's, there shouldn't be a need to make money through science. Mm -hmm. Like, there shouldn't be a need to in order to support. Unfortunately, that is the case. But. I argue there's, it's, it, it's, it's such a, it's such an interesting thing to. <laughs> the National Weather Service is about as close to a socialist scientific organization you're going to get honestly and i think that's part of the reason why they want to destroy it because it's it it's it allows it basically just allows you to freely find data and everyone has equal access to it it no you're, it's taking a perfectly good thing and just ruining it so, I, because I am that kind of, like, a leftist, I have to equivalent with terms. You say it's, like, the National Web Service is the kind of closest thing to being a socialist scientific institution as much as possible. What do you mean by that? Do the workers own the control of the means of production that the socialists introduce? No, I think of it more like a public library. Okay, yeah. No, no, don't worry. I, I like libraries. I, I, I think of it in the same way that a public library is a socialist institution. It basically in the sense that it is not its ability to function is not governed by who pays for it or who right. 
supports it. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that's a different kind of definition for socialism. Yeah. But, yeah, as Lynn said, it produces a public good. Right, I'm not saying that that's a bad thing either as well, too. It's yeah. just like, I, I, it's like my frustration when people would say, like, this is communist or this is anarchist or this is like socialist. I'm like, what do you mean? Because, like, and this is like, a friend said to me, too. Thankfully, we didn't, I wasn't chatting with this friend about, like, politics, like, this, like, entire mm -hmm. weekend. But, no, she said, I asked her, what is socialism? And, basically, she said, like, like France and, like, Germany. And it's just like, I, I have friends in France and Germany. They're not, those are not, uh, Sweden, they're not socialist countries, well, too, because, like, to her is, it is, like, the, the stereotype of, like, the government doing stuff, as we're too. Like, if, like, the government does everything that's communism, does government, government does some things as socialism, government does a few things as capitalism, and anarchism is no government, and those are all wrong. I, I understand why people tend to, it, it's, it's kind of like a bad branding or like misuse of the word socialism. It's like, oh, socialism is a good thing because a fire department and the roads and something like that. And no, that's like more, I would more classify it as like a, be, like a public good than just that. Not, it's, I would like to be more precise in terms of as well too. Mm -hmm. and that's just my frustration as well. It's like, I'm an actual socialist. What are you all talking about? But that's, again, my own constant frustration. Yeah. But... The idea of putting it behind a paywall, yeah, yeah, making it some people unable to get those forecasts that that can ruin lives. Yeah, that can kill people. Mm -hmm. Potentially, like that. That's not a stretch to say that. And uh, yeah, in all honesty, because like you you think about the types of forecasts that get put out. Mm -hmm. Talk about like tornado watches or warnings mm -hmm. or. Like her, like with hurricanes or blizzards or like whichever. I mean, the whole reason why we do those things is to protect people's lives mm -hmm. and their livelihoods. Mm -hmm. Putting that behind a, privatizing that, putting it behind a paywall, and basically, instead of making that the primary objective making profit the primary objective is basically the antithesis of why we do it mm -hmm. like when when we when we as scientists and, and meteorologists when we put our information out there we put our forecasts out there sure we it's it'd be nice to be able to make enough money to have a deep keep have a decent livelihood livelihood it's, outside of our jobs uh, no. but that's that's just how capitalism works unfortunately as well like i, I still wish like, for is like is not just be like only a few people that have like the comfortable life i wish it for like everyone to have a comfortable oh, life and i don't I see how that's yeah. not that that can't be possible but this current no, system the, no. the system of capitalism has to have it where there are haves and have nots or like there are be a yeah. small minority of owners as well too yeah yeah but my point is is that Beyond just being able to, shall we say, commoditize mm -hmm. what what we do, the whole point of why we do what we do is to improve the lives of everyone else. Mm. Now, are we perfect at that? No. Sometimes forecasts might be inaccurate. Of course, that's just the name of the game. Mm -hmm. That's why we do our research. That's why we improve things to be better adept at doing that i mean for example if you look at like the you know when they do like the cone of uncertainty mm -hmm. in a hurricane forecast you'll notice that compared to like years ago that cone has shrunk because we've gotten better at forecasting hurricane paths mm. so we want to improve these forecasts and we want to put out good forecasts so that everybody can 
protect themselves and their livelihoods or at least have a decent day. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, well, yeah, I mean, it's like for most part when you're kind of off on like our prediction and something like that, it's just like our day to day weather and just like, OK, that means that like you're telling me it's going to be nice out and something like that and then bring a jacket and it turn out being cold. But like that's just more of an inconvenience as opposed to like forecasting for like or predicting passive like hurricanes or tornadoes, which is like very prevalent. And the only reason that like there's been. It only inconsistencies is because like if folks could not predict that the strength of like a hurricanes like increasing over time in, yeah. in various places and and you know what one of the scariest things that i've noticed this year is that a lot of the models have been underestimating the eventual maximum strength of um of most of the hurricanes that I have produced in the Atlantic this year. Mm -hmm. um, I'm bad at remembering names, but the the second one that hit Florida. Oh, earlier, Milton. Yeah, Milton. The models never predicted that hurricane at the beginning to mm -hmm. become a major hurricane. And it was either that or like maybe a cat three at most. None of the models predicted it to be a Cat 5 at any point. And I think this is starting to become a bit symptomatic of the same climate change that the these same people are trying to deny and hide. Mm -hmm. So not only... Are we are we seeing it unfold? But we're gonna potentially have a regime that's actively trying to basically pull a "don't look up." Yeah, well, and uh, if I, again, it's just like um, but it, it sounds like I understand all your points. So what, it, I just also am so cynical that like. Uh, I don't trust the Democrats either to like combat the, like fully like climate change either. I I read like a Democratic the Democratic Party platform back in like September, and I'm still I, I decided to like still upload those those like sections of me reading those parts of that like a document as like individual videos because there was like one liberal that like said that like I did I I never read like Kamala Harris's like policies. I've read the Democratic Party platform that should be like Kamala Harris's policies, but like just guess what? Like liberals, I don't like think that like they're all fantastic and great and all and that they're the savior of everything because I always kind of go back to like Rudolf Rocker's like um, say the quote in from an anarcho-syndical and theory and practice that the uh, participation in like the parliamentary process has been like infected the socialist movements like insidious poison uh, inculcating in people from like self-help and give people the ruinous delusion that salvation comes from above <laughs> And so it's like, no, yeah, they're the it, they're the lesser of two evils in their harm reduction, but it's just like they're not gonna it, on climate change for sure. They're not gonna successfully do anything aim to stop that because they're so abundant by like uh, oil billionaires as well too, or would not ban like fracking. And the, uh, it's interesting because there was a brief period of time especially during like the 2020 election mm -hmm. during the the height of the pandemic mm -hmm. when those exact things that you were talking about became popular issues in the eyes of the public mm -hmm. and one would like to think that they still can be obviously Mm -hmm. But, I mean, in terms of, I mean, when when they were doing, like, the government stimulus checks and all those things and people were unable to rely on capitalism, essentially, to live their daily lives. I, I, I would say that, like, we never were relying on capitalism to live our daily yeah. lives. Like, capitalists have forced us to have to work, work a job in order to, like, live or have the means I, to be able yeah. to live. I... I get your point, but I think you also understand the point that I'm coming from with what I'm saying at the same time. Mm 
Uh, it, but uh, no, I actually, I never since like 2008, have we ever had that? Mm. Uh, not for like in my generation. Yeah. If maybe okay. for if maybe for Gen X, uh, yeah, they did have like the roadmap of like go to college to like get a degree to get a good job, and then then you can like with that good job, good salary, you can like have a home and then like re live out the rest of your life. That all burned up yeah. after 2008. Yeah, I guess I I was look I was I think I was talking more in terms of the short term in terms of the pandemic more than like mm. the long term of, that you're describing, which yeah. I think. I think both are valid in their own ways. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not at all saying right. that you're wrong. But like, be, like I think, and as a result of the pandemic, we were starting to see <laughs> like those effects of like those contributors to climate change suddenly drop off, mm -hmm. and people began to realize, oh, we can do things differently a little bit. Like, mm. say work from home for one, well, and try to re and try to reduce the amount of time that we're on the roads. It, it well, the thing is, like, uh, I think we either yes, I see, like, uh, Lucidia finally joined us, and also I think I'm uh, like, maybe it was used Lucidia. I was like, am I hearing Dragos like a voice in the background? Someone's probably watching one of Drago the Dragos uh, streamer right now. Uh I am a mod for Drago, so... Yeah, that makes sense. Ah, uh, there it is. I'm sorry to... that you can hear them, though. It, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> and But ads are going to start running on my Twitch channel in 20 seconds. And, like, I don't want to pause the conversation as well, too. So, like, hey, sorry if those on Twitch that are going to get ads, but, like, yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, so... There was a lot of these shall we say farther left policies or ideals that were starting to come into the fore like foreground um student loan forgiveness was one um yeah. banning of fracking was another one and you had this albeit brief period of time where some people in government were starting to talk about these ideas mind you the reason why they were doing it was because they were trying to rally up support of those people. Whether or not they were actually going to follow through, well... Yeah, no, no, they weren't going to follow through. No, no, no. Be yeah. Because, like, yeah. uh, as Foster Jespel said on, like, uh, the uh, panel uh, uh, stream that I did on Corey Johnson's uh, The Skip the Leftist podcast, uh, and she said, like, he, he, he who funds you runs you. And so, like, that's why I was... I've always been, like, cynical of the Democrats... Uh, for the longest time, because of how, no, the liberals, no, I don't believe the Democrats are going to do any change because, like, they, it, it's, it, it's all contingent on if Wall Street will approve of it. That's the only time we're going to get a UBI if Wall Street approves it. That's the only time we're going to get like fifty dollars minimum wage if Wall Street approves it. Uh, and I do not see like, so like people would say that like the only way to change the world as it is right now is to like vote into most progressive people uh, as much as possible. Well, what if the most progressive people don't make it to the general? Okay, then still vote for like the who is the most progressive person as well too. The lesser two evils. Oh, so, but then once they're in office, then you like write emails, write, uh, write uh, letters, like go meet them as well too, call them as well like that, and ask them to like support policies that you want them to support and it's like okay but what if like i do all that and they don't support the policies or to say they can't do that or are not interested what then do like do we continue do we continue just like uh advocating for those policies and like um the vote for the most progressive like person and period and so on and so forth and like at one point did we finally get those policies and also, uh, now, yes, it, it, people were trying, it, were reimagining like how to do things because of the pandemic. I would say they were forced to do so because of the pandemic. But like disabled people were advocating for like remote like work or like for universities oh, yeah. remote teaching as well too. It's only finally when like the able-bodied people were affected by something like the pandemic that the fun oh uh, actually we should do things as well too so oh yeah it's it was absolutely maddening that that's what it took and what's even more maddening is the fact that a lot of companies 
are trying to push return to office. It's about control over and, people. Yeah. Well, there's also another reason why. And the the and this is coming from someone who has spent a little bit of time in a situation where this was a thing. Um, one of the reasons why they push for it so hard is they have they need to justify having ownership or renting of large office spaces. <laughs> um, yeah. Before the before the pandemic hit, people went to people went to work. They were in these office spaces that these companies either owned or rented. Mm -hmm. And by utilizing and occupying that space, they could justify that expense. When the pandemic happened, everybody had to work from home. So that became an expense on their part that could not be justified. But hey, it was a pandemic, but it had to, they had to do it anyways. But now that we're at a... And I want to stress that pandemic is still going. Yes. It has never ended. Mm -hmm. um, That's probably, probably what some governments yeah, it probably never, say or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah, it probably never will at this point, honestly. Yes. The, I hate to say it, but... No, 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 yeah, I, I, at this, I agree. At this, at this point, at this point, COVID is just... In the eyes of the public, the COVID is just a second flu. Mm -hmm. At this point, even though it's, it's not, but anyway, it's yeah. not. I'm not saying it is. I'm not. No, like, I'm I, not saying it is. I'm just saying that's what the public perception is at this point, and it. I don't like it. it is. I know you. I. I know you don't. Just yeah. That's that is what the public will believe and say. Because they want to return to a normal, <laughs> and I think we got to like. A, this is the new more normal. Or, like, and try to go back to, like, the way that things were, I think it's just, like, we have to recognize that the world has, like, fundamentally changed forever. Yeah. yeah. Like, that, it, I don't know. Just funny to me how this was the new, this, or this is the new normal for mm -hmm. things like working from home and such. Mm -hmm. But... That was already normal for me, so... Yeah. And the thing is, there's there's a lot of evidence to suggest that working from home can actually be beneficial for a company. Yes, yeah. there is evidence to suggest that it may not be as good in some ways, but a lot of times, people... It, it, it tends to be... It tends to be dependent on what the job is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, what, what's go, what it is that's being done. But in many respects... Working from home, I like. Here, I can give an example for myself. My my previous job, I I went into the office a couple days a week. Now I work permanently from home, mm -hmm. and I the, <clears throat> the the fact that I don't have to deal with transit, I feel like I can spend some extra time working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can spend that time doing some more work. And potentially being a bit more productive than having to spend two hours a day or more getting to and from. Well, also, like, the idea of, like, the suburbs is just, like, parasitic as well, too, and, like, it should also be abandoned, hopefully. As well as, like, the idea of, like, landlords of any kind, whether, like, residential or commercial. I think... The suburbs is an interesting thing, it, the, the way I see it, because the parasism, parasitism of suburbs, I think a lot of times is rooted in the fact that it is so vehicularly centric. Yeah. I think if, they were, if you could design a suburban area that would be supportive of say walking or public transit or basically car alternatives i think it would be not perfect but i think it would absolutely be better well what's, wanna, well, what's wrong I with the, this, i'm sorry i'll let no, you finish 
I, I want to emphasize not perfect, obviously, mm. but I want to say it would it would be an overall better system than what we have now. It is, and, and that's the point that I'm trying to make. Yeah, but I'm kind of curious, like, why does it need to be that, like, we live here, but, like, work there? Not saying that, like, I, we have to, like, live where we work, but, like, why can't it, like, homes be, like, not too, not too far away from businesses? I think that they absolutely could be. But I think, I, there's sometimes situations where people just cannot be in, like, a city center area. Uh, Where, if it's because of price, that's just because of capitalism. Yes, true. And if anything, sometimes suburbs can be even more expensive. Yeah. No, it's just because of preference and like, okay, yeah, but like that, that, that preference should be like available to like those who have wanted. I don't, I, I think, I think one of the things is, and I remember Cassie kind of alluded to this at one point because of like a difference in the way that zoning is done mm -hmm. in uh, in certain areas of massachusetts which is the state that i live in mm -hmm. there are some very well defined areas that are strictly for only residential and strictly only for business mm -hmm. and there are some areas that are designed as mix so you can have businesses and you can have residential in the same in the same zone. Mm -hmm. I think if you, I think it it would be a lot better off if more areas were set up like the latter. Hmm. Then you would have more people living closer to the businesses that they make work at or go to to improve their lives, like shopping center like mm -hmm. grocery shopping or anything like that right the idea of being so stringent on where businesses are versus where residential are that really kind of schisms them a lot more than they ought to be hmm. so where where is the so what i'm wondering is if if it's possible potentially to create say a town area outside of the major city center that would promote both residential and business i'm not gonna uh, interest is not the right word but shall we say residential and business property and again not the best word but i think you understand where i'm going at with that allowing them to coexist together would make those areas outside of the city center a little bit more hospitable for those who live in those areas. That makes sense. I don't know. The, oh, I, I well, to your answer to your question, I don't know. Does it make sense? Like, I'm trying to like uh, parse this out as well too, because I I'm more just like interested in the very radical different in, uh, way of like organizing life. As a war too, because um, I think for like some people, it's just so hard to like divorce themselves from the, the thinking that like, well, you have to work a job in order to like uh live, and you and people have to like you know do business in order to like produce goods or services and like it and I don't know, it's just like. I, 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 I don't know if, like, I'm trying to... Uh, I don't know how interested I am to just try to make this, like, system, like, slightly better other than just, like, radically rethinking our whole lives and how we structure society. Outro video time! Yes, this time I'm actually making an outro video instead of just having text on here. So, if you like the video... Press the button to give it a like. It helps out the video as well, too. And if you dislike the video, that button is there, too, as well. Oh, doesn't matter. It helps the algorithm. It helps the video out of the way. Uh, you can also leave a comment if you disagree with something that I said or you just want to say, hey, I like this video or something like that. That will help out the video as well, too. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already as well, too. Um, this, yep, getting those subs numbers up always helps as well, too. And uh, also, don't forget to share around the video, too, like always 
your friends, uh, all your enemies on the social medias and be like, hey, check this out or listen to this. Or will you check out this person that's uh, rambling about so many different things? Yeah, that will help the video as well, too. And also over on the sides of my face right now or covering face as well, too, should be like the buttons for like over no, no, over here for like to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And also social justice out me if you haven't checked out that like uh, the a channel it's a weekly uh live stream show the youtube live stream show that I, I i'm sitting around with a bunch of my friends a bunch of other anarchists and leftists and socialists to talk about like current events news uh politics feminism anarchism socialism communism and various other things even cats even like pop culture as well too and over on like the of here should be uh some videos as well too for like that i recommend you check out as well or it's over here i don't know it around my face there's should be those buttons that you can click on as well too all right thank you for watching